Hey guys, my name is Wolf of Lego and welcome back to a brand new video. And today we're going to be taking a look at my custom Lego Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark minifigures. So I decided to make some figures from my one of my favorite movies. I would even say possibly my favorite film. Uh, it's right up there with Star Wars. I love Indiana Jones. The whole trilogy are some of my favorite films and I rewatch them every year. I love it. And I don't know if you could tell that I love it. I walk around <laughs> with a hat that I bought when I was like f fucking eight. I don't know. I've had that hat for so long now, I don't even know when I got it. I got it because I wanted to be Indiana Jones for Halloween. My mom bought me the hat and then she looked at me and said, you better wear this, not just Halloween. To the extent that I've had to get a second hat because the other one is faded and has a hole in it now. So uh, if that doesn't make you think I like Indiana Jones, I don't know what will. Uh, it's, it's, like I said, one of my favorite movie franchises, and to finally make some figures from it was uh, really, really fun. I've always wanted to do it. Um, ever since I started making custom minifigures, I've always wanted to make Indiana Jones figures, and I'm kind of glad that it took me so long to do it, because my skills have improved so much from when I started that I was able to make some really cool figures and some of my favorite figures I've made to this to this date. There's certain little bits and pieces that could be improved and I'll point those out to you guys and hopefully I can fix them in the future. But without further ado, let's go into a full close-up 360 on all these puppies here. Okay, so we're gonna start off with Indiana Jones. So Indy was a lot of fun to make. Uh, definitely a highlight of this year having an Indiana Jones custom is uh, something I've wanted to do, like I said, for a long time. All right, so he's got two accessories here. We got his bull whip and his pistol. So the bull whip is made out of, well, the only Lego bit is the handle here. That is a uh, ninja sword or a katana. And I cut the blade off uh, because I really liked how the handle looked with the, the pattern on there. So I cut the blade off and then I proceeded to sculpt on both ends and uh, use some E-tape to make the little loop down here. I used some uh, hobby wire and uh, wrapped that in Procreate to create the whip. Made that into a whipping motion. It is kind of somewhat poseable. You can kind of move it up and down and I can move it where I want it. Um, I don't know why you'd think Procreate would be more brittle. I don't know uh, if the wire just works that way it makes it pliable but I've been able to twist it and make it in different shapes and I haven't scratched off any paint or broke the procreate yet so uh, fingers crossed that that doesn't happen after this video but uh, let me remove that out of his hand real quick try not to scratch any of the paint off because uh, you don't want to paint where he's gripping because you know it's gonna scratch it off anyway so then his pistol here is just made out of a brick arms uh, python pistol like I did for Rogers from lethal weapon I just kind of shortened the barrel and uh, sculpted on the, my own little sight on the end and uh, painted that in gunmetal and put a uh, little you know made the barrel black so I think it works out pretty well it's not completely accurate to how his gun should look but uh, you know it does the job and uh, you know does the job for Indy too when he just gets a bit tired Alrighty, so the rest of the minifigure, uh, as you can see on the top of the head, he does have his handy dandy fedora, and uh, this was uh, this was fun. So I took a uh, the Lego fedora and the uh, Mutt Williams hairpiece, and I sanded the Mutt Williams hairpiece and cut it, and I glued it to the fedora and filled in the gaps with Procreate. It still is removable, and it turned out really nice looking. So you can have a nice little hat hair combo. The head is just the Han Solo head with some stubble on there, and I painted the eyebrows in a darker brown. The jacket is a Cape Madness trench coat that I shrinked up to size, painted all the various details on there with the black lines and buckles on the back, and on the front you can see I sculpted on some pockets with some Procreate, and uh, those turned out really nice. There's a strap of E-tape there to do as the jacket, little <laughs> jacket piece that comes up to the zipper to zipper up. Um, then the top of the jacket, as you can see, I made the cuff of uh, the collar with some uh, fabric that I kind of glued on there. I like the left side a bit better. It's a bit more defined. The other side kind of got messed up a bit. Um, at first, I thought it kind of looked like a winter jacket, but it kind of grow. It kind of grows on you, so uh, maybe I'll change that in the future. Who knows? The arms are just painted in brown with some black lines on the back and the front. He's got some dark tan hands to represent his gloves that he wears in the movie. So let me just take him apart here so we can look at the undershirt and the satchel. Alright, so the satchel is made out of E-tape, just a strap of E-tape uh, glued together with a little painted on buckle there. The satchel is made out of Procreate, sculpt that. It is removable just like the official Lego one. So let me just move it down so we can look at the figure and I don't have to take him apart completely. So the torso is just painted onto a white well, 
the torso is painted on a white torso. That Okay, I was going to say that anyway, but uh, I did a bit of shadowing uh, with some dark gray up there to uh, make the collar pop out a bit, kind of like I did with my Logan figure. Added various wrinkles, some pockets, and I think that turned out really nice. Let me move this back up here. Do, 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 do. Alrighty. So then the uh, the belts on the legs are made out of E-tape. The buckle is a piece of E-tape in the 3D. Uh, the little uh, buck, uh, the belt hanging off there is also E-tape, and the other belt is also E-tape. And uh, they're glued to the torso, and uh, as you can see, it turned out really nice. The holster is made out of Procreate with some E-tape, and it does have a magnet connected to it and the leg to allow it to move without damaging the straps at all because it stays in one position, and I thought that'd be pretty nice, and it turned out really nice. Uh, so the legs are in a dark tan, well, they're like a tannish brown, and uh, I tried to make it as accurate to the film as possible. I think I pulled it off pretty well. Then the shoes are in a you know light brown with some gray to represent the soles. And it does continue on to the inside of the legs. I'm sure you saw that. So let me snap him back together here. All right, so that's it for Indy. Uh, he turned out really nice and is definitely one of my favorites out of this line of figures. So let me know what you think of him in the comments down below. Okay, so our second character here is Marion. So Marion Ravenwood uh, is a mixed bag for me. I really love what I was able to do with the entirety of the body, but this head is bothering me. I think it's just the hair. Uh, it's way too high up in the sense that it looks like she has a gap. And it's like going inside, like there's a little cave in there. And uh, I've tried to fix it, and I just can't seem to make it work. So I'm probably going to have to uh, fix that in the future uh, some way. But uh, there's a bit of glare here because she's white, and uh, I didn't paint the white. The white is actually the Lego's uh, plastic. So it's a bit, uh, a bit of glare going on. So I'll have to zoom in to show you guys some of these uh, details I was able to paint on here. So her accessory is just a Lego frying pan. Uh, that I sanded the stud off the back and uh, kind of smoothed out the edges to give it more of that rounded look and just painted that in gunmetal just because that's what she used when they're in the market of Cairo. Alright, so then the hairpiece is just a Wonder Woman hairpiece. Uh, the, like, not like the uh, Wonder Woman movie hairpiece, it's the, uh, like, the animated version of Wonder Woman. And I cut out the tiara and I sculpted on some bangs. And like I said, I'm not super happy with those. Painted the face, that turned out okay. I like it. Uh, as you can see right there. So, it's okay. And then the torso here, this is where I spent most of my time working on this figure, was getting these designs right. This is not Lego's torso, this is my own torso. Uh, everything you see here except for the white is painted. So all the red there is painted. And uh, it was a lot of fun to do, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. And uh, I put a sealant over that, some Model Master sealant, and uh, that turned out really awesome. And uh, I'm really happy with that. And as you can see, I painted the little sash down below. Then the arms also continue these details. So I've been spending most of my time working on these arms and torso for the last couple weeks, trying to get that right. Uh, on and off work because I've been busy. But uh, I'm kind of blocking the light a bit so you can see it without the glare. Um, yeah, I'm really happy with how these turned out. Um, and I, I forgot to... Uh, take some masking tape and cover up where the arms move. So she's a bit stiff because of the sealant up there, but it's not too bad because I'm not going to be posing her like a maniac. And then the legs down below are just painted in some light red with some, uh, some like wrinkles added in there uh, with some black paint because when she's... she's got some baggy pants. We'll just put it that way. So uh, that's all painted on there. And it is continued to the inside of the legs, there's some lines in there. And then she has her sandals that are painted in some flesh to represent her feet. I didn't make any toes because I thought that just looked weird because I tried it and I didn't like it. Uh, then the bottom of the shoes are in like a uh, dark tan. And then she's got a red sash strap going on the top of the shoes. And it does continue on to the inside of the shoes. So yeah, that's about it for Marion. Uh, there's not much else to go over her. She's pretty simple. She just took a while to paint, and uh, I'm really happy with how her torso turned out, and I feel like her head could be a bit better. So you might be wondering why this guy is... And the reasoning for that is he didn't get his belly until the third movie, so, you know, he, he's, he was a... He was a bit... He didn't let himself go just yet. Uh, Salah here. So Salah! 
Uh, this was uh, a lot of fun. I don't know. I, I think uh, he was the first figure I finished, and just the simple design that he has. This is uh, the outfit he wears when they're trying to find the Ark in the excavation site. He wears this outfit through most of the film, so that's why I decided to make him in this. And uh, I had a lot of fun making this figure. So uh, I made him a shovel out of a Lego shovel. I just kind of sanded that and cut it to shape to make it more uh, like that. Now granted, uh, to make it look more like a spade shovel. And I'm twisting it and probably chip it, chipping paint off. I shouldn't be doing that. But uh, yeah, their shovels are really flat looking. It was kind of weird. Uh, I'm not used to that. With, uh, all the grave digging I do. Um, and then I got a rope here. This is just that Lego rubber rope that they made. I don't know what set this came in officially, but I had one. And I was just like, that looked nice because, you know, when Indian him infiltrate, he's got a rope to lure, uh, lower him down. So uh, the turban on the head is completely sculpted by me out of Procreate, and uh, that turned out really nice. I gave it, I painted it in a glossy white, and then gave it a brown wash to fill in all the cracks. And uh, you can see, oh shoot, uh, you can see on top. Uh, all those different details. I like how it really. I really like how this turned out. It should be all the way down to the bottom of his head, but uh, I didn't realize that, so I sculpted on some hair, and it still looks okay. And then we got a little bit of hair there. There's none here because of these flaps here. These are also Procreate, and it still is removable. And it's a really nice piece. I really like how this turned out in the end. So uh, definitely a highlight of the figure. Uh, another spot I really like is how I uh, the face. I think I really nailed Sala's look. Uh, you know, he's smiling, he's got his little mustache and beard, and uh, I, really, I think the eyes, uh, adding those little black lines really helps, uh, you know, show that this is Sawa. So then, uh, the rest of the figure is pretty simple. He's got a AR, uh, Cape Mantis AR jacket painted in white, uh, with a little darker, uh, gray on the top there, and then some, uh, gray lines. Then the inside of the torso, that is just painted, uh, <laughs> as you can see, uh, I don't really know what you'd call that, open shirt a bit. I feel like I could have improved right up there because it just looks a little a little funky looking. God damn it. Why? Oh, I'm an idiot. I keep trying to bend him and... God <laughs> um, And then you can see down here, he has a uh, E-tape <laughs> a little uh, skirt going on. Uh, not skirt, it's his robe that doesn't allow him to bend. So that's why I keep knocking him off the stand like an idiot. But, uh... Yeah, so that's, that's made of E-tape and painted up in a lighter gray color. And then we have an E-tape belt here uh, to be his sash. I feel like an idiot now. Uh, and then you can see I uh, glued that together, and he's got black boots. And that's about it for Sala. Uh, there's not much else to go over. <laughs> oh, God. Um, but, uh, yeah, I really like how this guy turned out. And uh, definitely uh, really like the head of the figure. So, yeah, that's it for Sala. So our next character here is Belloc. So Belloc is, uh, he's a really great villain. If you've never watched Indiana Jones, uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, he's definitely a highlight of the movie. Uh, but, uh, Belloc here, he has an accessory. This is an MP18 version 2. I believe that is what it is. Uh, I had the version 1 of this gun. I think it's MP18. If I'm wrong, correct me. Um... And I saw this at Brick Fair. I didn't know they were making a different version of Brick Arms, so I picked this up and I weathered it in gunmetal. And uh, from the scene that's in the back there on right here, uh, as you guys know, he does grab an MP18. So I decided to give him that as an accessory, even though he barely uses it. I don't even think he shoots it. Uh, so this is more accurate to his character. He doesn't really have a weapon, but I thought it would be neat to give him something. So the hat is a uh, Lego fedora. And what I did was I sanded the the edges of it to make it flatter to uh, represent his smaller hat. I sculpted with Procreate on the back to make the rim piece that uh, is on his hat. Uh, painted the strap in uh, black. It is in a gloss white. Then I sculpted the hair. This is probably the most horrible looking thing on the figure. Uh, the hair here. Oh, that's a bit of Procreate up there. That's kind of weird. Oh yeah, because I don't, I don't have a... Uh, stud piece as you can see in there. By the way, uh, let's ignore that, but uh, on the top, the hair here, it just doesn't look that great. I could have spent a lot more time on it to make it look better, but the thing is, I'm not really showing the figure from the back too often, and uh, yeah, it also made the hat kind of tilted because he always wears it kind of sideways anyway, so that's why the Procreate's in there, and that's why the stud uh, piece to hold the hair is not there as well. So I'm sure I could improve the hair if I wanted to, but uh, you know, it is what it is. So the face of the minifigure, I painted everything except the eyes. I think that turned out really nice. You can see all the little the little wrinkles on there. I think it uh, captures Belloc's face pretty nice. 
and uh, yeah, I was pretty happy with that when I finished it. I think the little lines by the eyes really, really make it look like Belloc. So then the arms of the figure are painted in a light gray. They have some E-tape on the wrist to represent the shirts coming down. It's got some buttons on the side there. Then the uh, same on that side. Then uh, he's wearing a suit coat. As you guys know, I've made a couple figures now with suit coats. So I'm kind of getting good at it. Uh, as you can see, the pieces are folded over per usual. You got all the detail painted on there on the front and on the back. I do like the back there. That was pretty fun to make. And then as you can see on the inside of the torso, we have a tie and the collar, and those are made of E-tape, so they're a bit 3D. And then we got the belt down below in a lighter tan. Then we got the standard kind of uh, suit pants I usually make with the line down the middle to represent kind of that little, you know, if you guys have any church pants, it's got like the little line. I don't know, church pants, more dress pants. That's more of a proper term for that. Then we got his fancy shoes that are in like a white and brown with some black on the bottom. These are pretty fun to make. I like them. And then the top I did paint on some lacy. Laces. Lacing. Yeah. But yeah, that's about it for Belloc. He was fun to make. Pretty uh, fun villain, too. And uh, definitely one of my favorite characters. Alright, so here we have Colonel D. Tretch. This guy was pretty simple to make. Uh, he actually was one of the easier figures. Uh, I just... I just kind of blew through this guy. Uh, he was really quick. But the one thing is, he is the most inaccurate dun, dun, dun. the hat all right so you see the hat up there well you see the little eagle down below it is supposed to be a little circle like there is but there's supposed to be a swastika but uh you know and I, I didn't put that there uh, and then below that it's supposed to be another circle with a red dot as you can see it's right there and then on this little strap here made it e-tape there's supposed to be another circle so he's supposed to have three circles and I missed one and uh, I didn't want to have to come back and do that again, so I just kind of left it how it is, and it looks fine. I don't really, really mind that much. Yeah, but if that really bugs you some for some reason, uh, let me know. But uh, the hat here, as we move on, is the plumber hat that was uh, released in the collectible minifigure series. And I just took some Procreate to flatten it out and make it more, uh, more square. Uh, not square, but just more raised up. Uh, and then I took a strip of E-tape, like I said earlier, to make the little strap going around. As you can see, that's where they intersected, and I didn't fill that in. But, you know, it's not the worst thing ever. I took some what Mutt Williams hair, glued that onto the hat. It is removable. I'm not going to remove it right now. Then the face, I painted that, except the eyes. I painted the eyebrows and the little scar on his cheek that he sports in the movie. And his face. And I think it turned out okay. Uh, it's probably not my favorite face that I've made. Um, but uh, I think it looks okay. I don't know how I could improve it, but, you know. Then the arms are just painted in a uh, like a army green. Uh, this was kind of a mix of colors. He's got some black hands. The torso has some raised procreate bits you can see to make it look 3D, such as the tie, the collar, uh, bits of the pocket. And uh, those are all painted up. You get a little eagle over there that's supposed to have a swastika underneath, but I did not put a swastika on there just because that would be really hard to do. Uh, then we got the E-tape uh, belt down there with the E-tape buckle, and then we have the E-tape little waist cape. And <laughs> making this figure, you can really tell how uh, Star Wars does take to heart that their Imperial officers look like Nazis. Because uh, this is literally the exact same thing I did to make my uh, Imperial officers for Rogue One. And uh, watching the films and whatnot, you can be like, hmm, wow, they actually are very similar in that regard. Then the boots are painted in black with some uh, gray soles. Those do continue on to the inside of the legs, like usual. You can see right there. I don't paint the bottom of feet. I don't think anyone does that. Uh, and then you can see on the side here, I'm sure you saw this, we have a holster. And uh, that is made of E-tape and glued on there. I was originally going to make it like indies and have a magnet and everything, but I was too lazy, so I just made it out of E-tape, and it looks just fine. But it does kind of uh, hinder his articulation in his arm. And in the back, pretty simple. It's a couple lines, some wrinkles. And yeah, that's about it for Colonel Dietrich. Dietrich? Dietrich? Ah, shit. Uh, his ni I'm going to tell you this, him and Tot, their names are never said in the movie. So you got to look them up to know them. So uh, I found that weird. But uh, yeah, really like how this figure turned out. Alright guys, so our next mini figure here on character is Arnold Tot. So uh, this guy was fun to make. I say that about almost all my figures. Because if I didn't have fun, you know, that would kind of be against, against the rules, I think. But uh, he's got an accessory here. This is a Brick Arms Luger. I didn't do any weathering to it. It's just a standard Luger. Nothing's changed on there. And uh, yeah, 
because he, I don't, I think he only has it one part in the movie. Uh, but either way, uh, we did the same, I did, <laughs> we, uh, I did the same thing I did for Indy as I bumped the camera. This segment's going really bad, but, you know, we're going to go with it. So I took a fedora and some hair. I took the Widow's Peak hair this time around and uh, did the same thing I did with Indy's hat and uh, I kind of glued it to the hat and filled it in with Procreate. The, uh, little side here broke off. You can see the crack up there. So I'm not going to remove this hat just because I'm worried I'm going to break it again. So uh, to show you the face here, this was painted using a Frodo head. I keep banging things around. But I used a Frodo head. I kept the eyebrows and the eyes because I liked those look. I painted a mouth, added some little cheekbones and I guess the lines I guess. Uh, and then I added his mole on the side and painted his glasses. And I think it looks pretty accurate to how he is in the film. Snarling, snaky, snaky, uh, sadistic uh, asshole. Uh, that's, you know, his character. Uh, so then the trench coat is a Cape Madness trench coat painted in a gloss black. Do not do that. I'm telling you now, this stuff does not flatten out. As you can see, the torso, this thing just, just I've, I've folded it, I've pressed it, it just always just curls out. I don't know what that is with the gloss paint, but it just doesn't want to stay in one spot. So, if if you want to make something, um, just just do matte, like the normal Apple Barrel gloss, or get some other kind of shiny black paint to use on this. But uh, the Apple Barrel gloss paint just, just doesn't want to work with me. So then you can see on uh, the arms here, we got some E-tape. Uh, those are painted uh, with some gray lines and some silver buttons, and represent the uh, coat little straps there. And then we have uh, a little belt going all the way around the torso, I mean the uh, the coat. And that is also E-tape, and it hangs off to the side a little bit. I really like how that turned out, and uh, definitely, definitely a cool little feature. We've got little pockets down there. And then uh, the inside of the torso, if I can show you this. There we go. So the inside of the torso is uh, sculpted, just like Colonel Dietrich. And uh, I probably could have painted them when I really think about it, and I'm probably not going to do anything like this in the future. It was something I wanted to try out, and I don't really like uh, the overall look of it. Um, I think maybe it has to be thinner, uh, but I, I'll do it now and then, I think, if it just, like, if I do a tie and a collar, you know, and then I feel obligated I have to kind of do this as well, but, uh, yeah, I don't know, it, it, it's okay. So let me zoom in real quick so you can see a little better. We got some buttons in there, a little handkerchief, a little red pin that's also supposed to have a swastika, and then we have, uh, some, uh, some pockets down below, and, uh, then the legs are also the standard type of um, dress pants that have the lines, and then the shoes are painted in gloss black with some gray soles uh, that I kind of... And uh, I'm not going to do it just because uh, I've said it over and over again. Well, I've not said it. I've done it over and over again. The uh, It does continue to the inside of the legs. Uh, but, you know, you don't probably really care about that. But, yeah, that's about it for Tot. Uh, it turned out really nice. And uh, he's, a, he's a pretty neat villain, and uh, definitely... As you can tell, this is not not ideal, but uh, that he's a Nazi definitely makes his death a lot more satisfying. Speaking of which, all right, so I did actually end up making both uh, Dietrich and Tot's faces as they melt from the iconic scene at the end of the movie where uh, the Nazis open up the Ark and they all die. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Uh, so Dietrich over here, I took a uh, blank head and I sanded away the cheeks, painted the eyes and the eyebrows, and then I made a hole in the mouth and uh, painted that all up in a flesh color and used some red and some pinks and uh, dry brushed it in some browns. I also took a drill bit and drilled the top of the forehead a bit. You can kind of see that up there to represent it kind of melting away. Then uh, Todd over here. I used another blank head. This one's definitely better in my opinion. Uh, I made holes for the eyes. I sculpted the eyes with Procreate, made little balls of Procreate, stuck them in there to make it look like they're popping out. Uh, drilled a hole in for the mouth, painted on the teeth. Uh, took an X-Acto knife and cut alongside the head to make uh, little pieces of rolled up uh, plastic to make it look like he's melting. Uh, used some bread tie wire to create some glasses. Uh, dipped those in uh, glue to give them some lenses. Painted on those. Uh, used glossy red and some flesh colored paint. Definitely some really cool accessories that I've made for these figures and you can totally recreate the scene from the end of the movie in style.
Okay, so our last minifigure here is the German mechanic. I kind of love this guy. Uh, this character is just like, he just wants a good old-fashioned fist fight, and Indiana Jones is just a dirty boy, and uh, throws sand in his face, bites his arm, and uh, all this stuff, and ends up uh, making him ultimately kill himself. Uh, but this this figure I wasn't going to make originally until I was at Brick Fair, Virginia and uh, T. Maz one and the Moose Figs were requesting this quite a bit and the thing was I've always kind of liked this character so in the sense in a, in a way I kind of wanted to make him and uh, just that they asked so much I was like okay uh, people want to see this well they wanted to see it and I thought it would be fun and I had a couple ideas of how to do it so I did end up making him in the end and uh, I'm glad I did. So we'll start off with the head. Zoom in a little bit so you can see it a little bit better there. So what I did is I did not paint the eyes. I sculpted on a mustache. I sculpted, not sculpted, I painted the uh, cheekbones, the eyebrows, and the happy dumbass grin on his face. So then the torso was sculpted out of Procreate and same with the back. And then those were painted in a flesh color uh, to represent his muscles and whatnot. I did the same with the arms. The arms are extended and uh, the legs are also extended. So he is a tall, he's a tall, tall guy. So you put Indy up next to him. And as you can see, I don't know if I don't cover up Indy. Uh, Indy with his hat, he is still much taller looking. But as you can see, he does... Uh, he is a bit taller than him, and I kind of had to do that. But if you take like a character like, um, I guess we'll use Sala, and you can see he's he's a lot taller uh, than your average minifigure, and I definitely think that was needed here. Uh, he's a bit too buff looking, I think, uh, but uh, it's it, it's not the worst thing ever. Uh, so the sculpted pecs, uh, I decided to do off of the Moose Figs figures. He does uh, that quite often. I think Bill Bob has done a couple of those. That's where I got the idea to put some nipples on there from his uh, um, Game of Thrones guy, the one who's playing Aquaman, I guess. Uh, then the legs are painted in a dark tan. The belt is made of E-tape. The boots are painted in the army green I made for the uh, colonel. And then you see some uh, little tan straps on the back. The soles are painted in a dark brown. And they do continue on to the inside legs as usual. So, definitely uh, Definitely a fun figure. It was very simple to make. I think it just took a while because I was sculpting the muscles, and I probably should have just painted it because it would have uh, been a lot quicker. But uh, I do like how this figure turned out, and definitely uh, you can make some nice little poses with him and Indy. Uh, it's kind of recreating their little fight that they had in front of the German plane. And uh, I am very glad I made him, so let me know what you think of him in the comments down below. Okay, so before I end the video here, we got Rene Belloc holding the idol from the beginning of the movie. So this is just Lego's idol piece that I sanded the bottom and painted it up in gold. I was going to give it a black wash and add some detail like the teeth. Uh, I'll probably do that maybe in the future. I don't know. I still actually want to make the Staff of Raw and the Ark. For some reason, I didn't make those. You'd think that that would be like something you'd want to make right away, uh, but I didn't. Uh, but as you can see, it's just a basic thing. And possibly I'll make a Satibo. Is that how you say his name? Sati. Um, he's the guy in the beginning who was with Indy in the temple. Uh, I didn't make him either. Or the monkey. Uh, those are also two characters that have been highly requested by somebody. So possibly I might make them in the future to go along with a video with the Ark and the Staff of Ra. Who knows when that's going to be. But uh, yeah, just wanted to show that little guy off. Alright, that's it. There ain't no more. We got all these figures done and I finally have a video for you guys. So uh, thank you so much for watching if you watched all the way through. And if you like these minifigures or like this video, please do give the video a like. It's very much appreciated. It lets me know that you guys like what I am making and uh, want to see more of this. So uh, yeah, I just want to let you guys know. At this point, I am no longer to make minifigures from a movie that I haven't seen. Just because so many times now I've made figures and I see the movie and I don't really like the movie. So then I don't really care about the figures I made. I still liked how my figures turned out and I still like displaying them. But I don't really care for them as much as I would with, let's say, something like this. This is a movie I really enjoy and I really have a lot of fond memories of. So, you know, I'm going to think more about this in a more positive light than I am about, like, <coughs> Suicide Squad. But, um... So I'm going to see my movies, well I'm going to see movies and then decide if I'm going to make figures on them. So if any of you are wondering, I'm going to make Thor figures for Thor Ragnarok or Justice League or uh, Star Wars Last Jedi. Just know I'm going to see the movies first, but <laughs> Last Jedi is going to be kind of an exception because I might make figures a couple from that movie before I see it. 
uh, just some that have more images released to them, so I could, you know, I, I, I can make them as accurate as possible. If there's not a lot of images of certain characters, maybe I might not make them, but do expect some of them, just because I like Star Wars too much. But, um, just to let you also know that um, my, my figures are just going to take longer. I just have come to the fact that I can't produce figures as quick as I would like. It takes me a couple months. Uh, <laughs> hopefully it won't stay that way, but I just take longer to finish figures. And I just want to let you guys know that this is kind of how I'm going to go. Um, but uh, yeah, just um, my next projects I would like to do. Uh, I'm thinking about doing a Daredevil from Daredevil Season 2 and maybe some characters from that, like the Punisher and stuff like that. Uh, possibly Spider-Man Homecoming. I might rewatch the movie to see if I want to. Uh, at first I was going to, but I just don't have the motivation to make any. So I'm going to see the movie again, prob probably, and then uh, make up my mind if I'm going to or not. So uh, if any of you are wondering about that. And, uh, yeah, so those will be um, one or the other. Uh, there's some other characters I want to make from different things that might come up. Uh, such as Firefly and some Halo figures, so um, just know that it's going to be a little longer. So because of that, I decided to do something kind of neat. So at the end of any custom minifigure showcase video, or custom figures, uh, I'm going to give a shout out to another customizer in the community. Uh, for you guys, you can go check them out and see some of their work because uh, I think that'd be kind of neat. So today, I'm going to be giving a shout out to Raccoon Custom. Uh, he's on Instagram and Flickr. I don't, I don't believe he has a YouTube channel, but he makes some really unique minifigures. I don't know, uh, they just, they have a unique look to them. Every other uh, customizer uses paint and stuff. Well, he uses paint too, but no, they have a similar look to uh, the figures, but uh, Raccoon Customs, he uses like a lot of 3D elements and he sculpts his hair very differently. I, I don't know what he exactly uses, but it looks his figures just look unique, and they look very different, and they stand out to me than a lot of other people's figures. So I definitely like his style, and I think you guys would like it too. So there'll be links to his uh, Instagram and Flickr in the description down below. Definitely go give him a follow and uh, check out his stuff. So uh, yeah, I'd like to do that uh, in the future, kind of give people shout-outs, because sometimes it's nice to have other people kind of expose uh, you guys to um, more people in the community because there's a lot of people who make a lot of stuff there isn't just these main people who make things there's a lot of hidden gems that you gotta find so uh, definitely go look around and I'm sure you'll find some interesting stuff so yeah guys I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, uh, don't forget to follow me on my uh, social media it's definitely on Instagram, Flickr and Twitter. I don't use Twitter that much. Uh, Flickr I keep for finished photos and Instagram is more behind the scenes where you could have saw some of these guys before they got done. So, you know, definitely go uh, follow me over there and you can definitely see some progress photos. I just said definitely way too many times there. Um, yeah, but that's about it. I hope you guys have a nice day. God bless you people of justice. May the force be with you always and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.